How are you doing today, Mr. Goodman? Um, Mr. Goodman, you there?
Yeah, but then it goes too too far in one direction. Yeah, that's the problem. So good normally normally pretty good. Yeah. All right, so I'll be on the phone for a little bit. So let's check who all is here. My portal, there's my portal. Brian, did you get signed up for classes? Why not? Hmm. You may have to get them out as your schedule, and then I can look at it. Okay, let's see here. Robert Kirks here, Ailey Smith, Andrew, Gabriel Tucker. I don't see Gabriel Tucker. I see Matthew York though. Uh, I want to say that I saw Gabe just a moment ago in here. He might have left since you just now started the, uh, like, screen share. Maybe. I don't know. I can't leave that quick. <laughs> There's not a five-minute or whatever window. There's no rule like that that college students make up. Uh, Jared's here. Sean's here. Joshua Maines. Did he leave and not come back this morning? I saw him in Ms. Dayuda's class at 10, but he looked exhausted, so he might be asleep. Okay. Hey. Haley. Work maybe I don't know, but I thought he's he's normally in class on Wednesdays though. McGuire yeah. and Brian's here. Jeremiah's here. Chase, we're missing Chase. Chase Haley O'Donnell and Joshua Maine. All right, Haley, you said you're going to come and, and take that treadmill. I think. See, if I order people to do stuff, then, then I'll get the crap out of my, out of the place. Uh, Jeremiah got the desk. That desk fit in your room, Jeremiah? Well, you see, it's a lot bigger than what I expected in the beginning. So um, I'm actually going to use it as a giant TV stand for my living room. That's a pretty big TV stand. Yeah, I know. But I mean, there's no way I was getting that up a whole flight of stairs. Or especially not by myself. And once once I got it inside the house by myself from dragging it about a hundred freaking yards, I just did not feel like moving it again. So it's there until further notice. All right, Brian, does it say that on all of them, Brian? Okay. And then so that's scheduled, but you can't add the internship one? Okay, click OK on that. And then uh, and then what is the final step? There's like, I think there's a, a, yeah, scroll up on that bottom section and actually click the register drop button. Uh, there's a scroll bar right beside that one. Yeah, scroll up on there. You see where it says register? Yeah, click that button. 
And now you go to step, uh, you click the register drop button again on the right side. And then does it finally take you to step three where you, I think those are selected, yeah. Okay, cool. We will get, um, maybe at break time we'll go down and get you in the other class. I know the person that's got the override power. Okay, so yes, we wanted to jump into our updates and figure out why updates is not working. And I do know why they're not working. I want to check and see if mine updated though. So what would never need everybody to do is be in their Azure portal. And I need them to be clicked on the virtual machine. So as you log in, you know, on your dashboard, you have a bunch of different uh, resources and one of them says virtual machine. That's the one you need to be clicked on. And that gives you your settings and stuff on the left side, scrolling halfway down, get you to the operations section. And then the operations section is where you have your guest plus host updates at. And as we click on the guest plus host, host updates, you'll see that you're getting some errors. And when you open up the update manager, so I don't have any errors. Mine's all ready. Let's see my history. I've had a couple of failed ones. But uh, my last one that I ran under history, it was successful. But you won't have a successful one unless you went in and done some fixes. You're likely to have errors continuing. So on your history screen, if you click your errors, your latest one, probably from the third, you have a option at the very bottom that says output in the bottom center after you click on one of your of your uh, patch errors. So if you click on output, it will show you what the Linux screen dumped to the screen. If you scroll up a little bit, you get a bunch of these little errors here requiring SC Linux policy. And it's all talking about SnapD. And we remember that we installed SnapD from the CertBot installation instructions, or we hope that we remember that. But it's having trouble finding SE policy that matches the version of SnapD. And I had a few students that set up uh, cert bots later. A lot of students set it up on Monday. I set it up Monday or Friday, and everything worked great. And then we got into Wednesday and Friday of last week, and students were not able to run cert bot. They were getting this error trying to install SnapD that they couldn't find dependencies to install it. That's what's happening. It's trying to update now for those that for those that set theirs up early in the week and actually got CertBot working early, your updates aren't working because CertBot updated itself and it's on something called EPEL. It's extra packages for Linux, and they updated, but the base the base Linux uh, hasn't updated itself yet. So they built a new package. They built it against some new security settings. However, the, the base install, they only update that when Red Hat updates their site. Now there's an inconsistency. There's newer software under the extended, uh, the EPEL release, and there's a way to fix it. Let's look at the CertBot installation instruction page somewhere. Installing, uh, installing Nginx on the CentOS 7, where I found the fix. Why is the page not? loading 
try it again. There we go. Where I found the fix was on the installation instructions for SnapD. And that's the product that's airing out on patching. So I clicked the SnapD site and I clicked the CentOS link. And I hope everybody got to doing. Now let's scroll down here. Now we, we installed this yum install SnapD, but some of you had errors. And I pointed out, I think it was Wednesday or Friday last week, that missing packages with EEPL it actually told us on the screen that if you have something like this SE Linux, which is exactly what the update screen is showing us, and there's a link here on how to fix it. So in such an event, you can either wait and ignore the errors, or you can click this link to enable a continuous release repository. And this page at the towards the bottom told us how to use the fix. And it told us for CentOS 7 right here that you ran yum config manager enable CR. So if you want to do the fix, you can do the yum configure manager enable CR command. You can copy that. And I'm not going to put it in my putty. I wanted to reshow everybody. I know I'll show this class, but we can do it again without using putty, Sean. <laughs> no, Sean, no. <laughs> We're going to take a much longer, arduous route to do it. It's not that bad. But I'm going to copy this yum config manager enable CR command, go to my Azure portal. I'm still in the little section here under operations where I click guest plus host updates. And I'm going to click the run command on the left side under my, you'll have to back back out. You may have to use your little, what they call a, um, what they call a footprint at the top. You may have to click in the footprint. You may have to click your domain, your virtual machine name again. The word right past dashboard, if everybody sees my mouse moving top left corner of the screen, click in your virtual machine name, and then you can find the run. Scroll halfway down under operations, click on run command, click on run shell script, and you can either control V, paste that command in there, or you could type in yum dash config manager dash dash enable CR. And if you need to see it bigger, I can make it big. Maybe too big. There we go. Yum dash config dash manager space dash dash enable that uh, space CR. So that enables the continuous release cycle. And once you got that typed in, you click the run button. Run. Okay. Issuing that command and clicking run, it should give you a, a display. I've already run it on mine. We're going to wait for Sean. And complain that his isn't running fast enough because it does take like 30 seconds before it gives you an output. Is already given? Yeah, it's already giving you an output. Okay, let me, let me zoom here. So if it runs correctly, it gives you a line of weird stuff in the output. You won't see an error if you scroll up and down. If you scroll towards the top of the output, you'll see the uh, the CR in brackets right here. You'll see repo CR with all these equal marks. And then you'll see it asynchronous is true. It's turned on. So I wasn't any error outputted. That means it turned on. So that's what you should be looking for. So that should enable the continuous release. Now, those of you that were having updates that were failing, the next run of the update should should be good. 
and that's probably towards the end of class. So you're likely, unless you look at it tonight, or you'll wait till Friday to look and see that all of your patches have patched into the system. I do think that's pretty cool that I can schedule updates for a virtual machine through Azure. That's a nice addition. I guess it's an addition. I surely would have seen that last spring, but maybe not. Maybe not. I'm going to say I probably should have, but anyway, my systems, uh, I have a green checkbox. I had two fail in the last whatever days, but this readiness screen is, is good to see. Yeah. Did you just configure yours, Brian? One, two, three. Yeah, if you just activated it, it takes about 30 minutes before this will turn green and then you can set a schedule. This has to be green before you can set a schedule. Hey, Mr. Sean. Goodman. Sean, I want to look at yours. Go back to update management. I just want to see what yours looks like. And then I believe Mr. Talon. So yours that says green and ready, but you have three updates that have failed to install. So yeah, by um, when is your update schedule set to run? Click on deployment schedules. Two. two. So you might actually be able to see the output by about 2.30, maybe before the end of class to see if that ran. Let's check out. So I think Mr. Talon, you asked a question. Yeah, I, so, I remember you set it up the other day. We, we, you helped me set it up and I have no errors, no no failed. Yeah, click your deploy updating. schedule, deployment schedules button. So you have a deployment schedule. That looks good. Look at your history. So it succeeded. Okay, maybe that we installed snap D after the last patch come out. So yours may have already had all the updates. In any case, your system's working great. Sweet. So does that mean I get an A plus? For updates, sure. Yes. All right, thank you. Okay, cool. We've been securing stuff down. Does anybody need? I noticed a couple of people did not have HTTPS set up. Does anybody need? Does anybody not got their, their cert bot configured in here? I think Roger, I think yours was secure. Jeremiah got his secure. I'd like to make sure that was all troubleshooting was done on that, but if everybody's got it. I'm gonna copy this to the clipboard and go to my site. So my site's secure, HTTPS. And I got my air conditioners for sale. <laughs> Not a good man air conditioners. If you ever build a house, you've got to replace it. It doesn't give me any money whatsoever because some other good man owns that company. I wonder who, I wonder if I could show up like, hey, you my long lost cousin. How rich are you? Can I borrow some money? Yeah, it's like figure out this family tree and it, it may not even be on somebody's last name. I would think it would be. I don't know. All righty.
You have a weird, weird owl there. And the HTTPS and CertBot. So CertBot is What is CertBot? Automatically enable HTTPS. Sweet. Electronic Frontier Foundation helps support CertBot and lots of companies donate money. And they used to have a list of contributors. I don't see the list of contributors anymore. I don't know what's going on with that. Why CertBot? Why did they create this? Why are companies donating for this? The push has been on since around 2015 or so, or since before. They wanted the entire internet to be HTTPS. Why does security experts and everybody want, want the entire internet to be HTTPS? And why would companies donate millions of dollars to help support that effort for free? Oh. Well, that's from 2018. Encrypt the web. Also, I assume Google is probably one of the big supporters of this. Well, that's just simply across Google. Google's got 95% of their products on HTTPS. And back in 2014, so I guess I was off a year. In 2014, that's when they started the Encrypt Everything initiative on the internet. Encryption by Google product. I don't, want, I don't care about just Google, I want like worldwide traffic. Since early 2000, we have been able to measure the prevalence of HTTPS connections thanks to Google Chrome users who choose to share their usage statistics. Now, this is Google Chrome's usage statistics on sites that people visit that are HTTPS. And back in 2015, it looks like. You had somewhere between 30 and 40% of the internet traffic was HTTPS. Today, you have 80 to 90% of HTTP traffic is being registered versus HTTP. by region, countries, all pretty close to the same in the 80 to 90% range, a lot better than the 30 to 40% range it was six years ago. Okay, and the purpose of everything going HTTPS is man in the middle attacks. 
these frames go across several different routers, across fiber optic cables and stuff through switching centers and telephone companies and in places and uh, people can hack routers and switches and they can intercept frames and inject malicious code into them. And they can trick your computer to route your stuff through a different router instead of your main router. Look at all of your frames and inject code. If they're not encrypted, it's very easy to read a frame into RAM, read the contents and put your own code in. So probably one one packet or two packets could send the whole web page, well, not the graphics, but at least all of the text, the HTML text and stuff in here could be contained in one web page. And with it not being HTTPS, what you can run into with a big problem on this, links like asuv.edu, right? You see it? If it's not encrypted, you can pull the plain text ethernet frames, find the href tag and replace what it's equal to. Send the frame back on, the web page will load up. The text that you click on will still show up the same as before, but the, but the hyperlink can be changed out to a malicious like to a Metasploit server running ready to break your site. So when you click the web link and go on, I'm going to BB. You don't go to BB. You go somewhere else. Now I hard coded that in there. There's not man in the middle taking effect right now, but I'm showing you what could happen is this page source, all those, uh, all they have to do is search for I mean to click that I meant to highlight it. All they have to do is search for the href portion and replace what it's equal to. So if it was originally www.asub.edu and then you had your little bracket and you had www.asub.edu, you click on it, you go to the ASUB website. But a man in the middle attack will just change the portion that you don't see on your screen and the text that you actually click on in the web browser will stay the same and you'll get taken to the malicious site. And that's why you use HTTPS everywhere. What is ASUBB not doing? I'm really concerned that we're not HTTPS. That's, that's above my pay grade. Sure, it was like that. I think at one point in time we were HTTPS, the new chain hosting providers, and I don't think it's ever been HTTPS since. So that does have me concerned why we're not HTTPS. Why well, hosting provider not secured our site down? Because that is definitely wide open for man in the middle attacks. So you've been given permission by somebody that doesn't have a pay grade to give you the permission and you'll still go to jail. You set up man in the middle uh, servers and strip and change those links out mm -hmm. as people browse them and take over all the people's uh, computers. No, that is, you don't have permission for that. It's weird because the Vanguard portal is. Vanguard portal is another company. Completely different company. And I'm will be really concerned if the Vanguard portal is not encrypting all of the traffic because of this right here. 
and the username and password. So on the ACB website, I, there's no login to the ACB website that I'm aware of. And there's login to your email, which is Office 365. There's login to the Vanguard portal, which is a completely different website. What's the Vanguard hub? I've not heard of that one yet. Hey, am I the reason why we started using that um, that software? The uh, what is that called that we use to approve of our login credentials and stuff? I feel, like I'm the reason. I feel like I am. Yeah, because my my uh, my account got on at a. I'm sorry, I can't speak right now, but my account for the school got compromised, and uh, they had to shut down my. account, had to lock my account. You're not the only one that had that happen, so that you're not a lone person into that. There's been several people. I don't remember. Yeah, maybe I do remember seeing your name going across once, but I, I don't know. I think that may be before you're one of my students, maybe your first semester or something. But there was a lot of other students had the same issues. And there was faculty members too that had their accounts compromised. So Duo was added in to try to stop that. Before Duo, they did SMS and they texted your phone. Any faculty that that got hacked, uh, SMS was automatically turned on after their account was fixed. They could not log on without two-factor authentication. And then, then they had a big committee over uh, what they needed to migrate to for two-factor authentication. They talked about it for like 18 months and come up with Duo. So they did the research. Somebody did the research. Fix a pretty good product. They went with app based and token based instead of SMS. They went with the most secure. I don't know about most secure, but one of the top secure ways of two factor authentication. I wonder if y'all start emailing help desk and going, I'm concerned that the ASCP website is not HTTPS and I'm concerned about man in the middle attacks and href uh, tag stripping and redirecting me to malicious sites. I wonder if that would get anybody's attention. <laughs> I wonder if I should send that email. Makes me want to call one of our, one of the main IT guys at break time. I think I think I may actually call an IT guy at break time and go, dude. I'm looking at this site for over a year and teaching my students how crappy it is. Not the content, just the security on the thing. What's the chances of somebody wanting to attack the ASUB website? Well, we're a university and the Iranians live in the world. So I think pretty high. And it's the Iranians on this on this one. They like to attack the universities. I mean, I don't know if that site's, is, is that being spooked? I don't know, we're not HTTPS, I can't validate anything. Most likely though, you're not having something like that done, but just the fact that you're not running encryption, you leave yourself open and it'd be really hard to tell if somebody's manipulating what you're seeing on your screen. Protocols like Telnet, you've been told never to use Telnet, I hope in Cisco, and then it's bad. FTP is another protocol that's now expired. Even the kernel, the Linux kernel, they turned off FTP three, four years ago now, it seems like. Maybe it wasn't quite that long ago, but pretty close. So you have to use secure protocol or HTTP, you know, an HTTPS to transfer files. 
That way no virus can be injected in the middle of the files that you're being transferred to. So I can't complain, I guess, too bad. Because I still have an FTP site going. And I was like some of the lax IT people thinking it's just some files. I don't, I'm not taking uploads. Why do I need to secure that? It's only for students to download. I mean, what could go wrong? A man in the middle injecting malicious code in there. Like, but it's just a student. It would screw up their computer, lose all their homework. They would fail. I mean, how does that affect me? But that's a joke. But yeah, that's uh, at some point in time in the next decade, I plan on taking the FTP site offline and only allowing HTTPS traffic on it. That's my plan. And you heard next decade. Doesn't mean that I'll get to it. But that's the plan. Interesting. Yep. Any questions so far on why we should encrypt everything? Why that I made you do the lab to set up a web server and set up cert bot? Hopefully that was some good practice. And then again, let's take a short break and I'm gonna start looking through the grades and make sure that somebody is not missing HTTPS on the assignment. 